We're going to take this boring static scrolling site and convert it into a parallax scrolling site just by using CSS. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, we're gonna create this awesome parallax scrolling effect, but we're gonna do it only using CSS because you don't actually need any JavaScript to create this. So to get started, I just have the images we're using. We have this mountain image and this tree image. I mean, it doesn't really matter what images you use. These ones just work well enough for our scenario. And as you can see, the mountain moves much slower in the background, the trees move a little bit quicker, and then the welcome text moves faster. And to kind of explain what parallax is, is essentially the idea of having elements move at different speeds on the page. So the things that are closer to you, they're going to be moving faster. So this text moves up and down faster, while the things like trees and the mountains that are further away are going to be moving slower. So you can see the tree, it's scrolling at a different pace than the rest of our page, and the mountains are even scrolling at a different pace than that. It gives a really 3D effect to your page without really having to do much in the three dimensions. So in order to create this effect, we're going to obviously need an index.html file. So we'll just create a simple index.html, and we're also going to create a style sheet. We'll call it styles. Dot CSS. Now to create our boilerplate HTML, we're just going to hit exclamation point and hit enter. And then inside of the body, we're just going to have a few really simple sections. The first section we're going to have is this header section. So we're just going to create a div. We're going to give it a class of wrapper. And this wrapper is going to go around all of the content on our page. This is super important and something I'm going to explain in just a little bit. And the next thing we're going to need is that header that I mentioned. And then inside of here, we're going to have our images, which are going to have a source of images slash mountain, and our, we're going to give it some alt text here. We'll just say background. It doesn't really matter. Actually, let's just remove the alt because in our case, it doesn't really matter what this is. We're going to give it a class here of background. There we go. We're also going to have our next image, which is our trees. Whoops, make sure I spell trees properly. And this is going to be our foreground element. And that's because our background is going to be moving at a slower pace because it's further away from the user. Lastly, I want to have an H1 here, which we're just going to give a class of title. And inside here, I'm just going to put the text welcome. Then outside of our header, I'm going to have another div, and I'm just going to actually we'll give this one a section here. And the section is going to have some lorem text in it. We'll just say lorem 300. It's going to give us a bunch of text, and this is just going to allow us to be able to scroll our page. So now if we just inspect this, open it with live server, you can see it opens up over here. We have our mountain, we have our trees, our welcome text, and then all of our text down here at the bottom of our screen. Now, the very first thing I want to do is just make our text a little bit easier to read. So in our styles CSS here, I want to select that title. And I want to select that section. In the section, I'm going to change the font size to 2 REM, just like that. And we'll say the padding is also going to be 2 REM, give it a little bit of space. So when I save, and I make sure that I include this by just putting a link tag in our CSS, there we go. You can now see our font down here is much larger, has some padding. Also, I'm going to give it a background color of 333. And the color of the text is going to be white. There we go, just so it has a background and everything. And you also notice we have some margins on the outside of our body. Let's remove those by saying body as a margin of zero. There we go, let's get rid of all of our margins. Now we have our mountains up here, trees, and then our text at the bottom. Our title, we want to be pretty large. We'll say font size here is gonna be seven REM, and our color is gonna be white. And we're gonna give it a text shadow so it's a little bit easier to see. We'll just give it a zero, zero, five pixel black text shadow. Essentially that gives us this nice black outline around it that's kind of that shadowy effect. So we can see it even if it goes over some of our you know, mountains in the dark section or in the sky in the light section. It's gonna be visible no matter what. Now we can actually start styling out our parallax effect. And I mentioned at the very beginning how this wrapper class is really important. And that's because in order to set up a parallax effect, you need to essentially create a scroll container. And by default, our body is going to be the thing that's scrolling. Right now, when we scroll our page up and down, our body is the thing that's scrolling. But we can't actually use our body to create this parallax effect. We need to have an element inside the body in order to create the parallax effect. So essentially, we're creating a wrapper, and we want our wrapper to act just like it's the body, but it's not the body. That's all this is doing. So in order to emulate that kind of effect, what we need to do is we need to take our wrapper class, and I want our wrapper to essentially be the height of the screen. So our height is 100 VH. Now our wrapper here is the exact height of our screen, and that is it. Then the next thing that I want to do is I want to set our overflow in the Y direction, sorry, the Y direction to auto. That way, if we overflow, it's going to scroll for us. So right now when we're scrolling, we're technically scrolling inside of our wrapper and not inside the body because the wrapper is 100 VH. That means it's the exact height of our screen. And then our wrapper is just having all the content inside of it have the scroll. So by writing this simple little code right here, all we've done is we've taken it so that when we scroll our page, we're scrolling the wrapper and we're not scrolling the body. 
it's kind of weird that we have to do this, but in order to make parallax work, we need to do this. Then finally, I'm going to take our overflow in the X direction. I'm going to set it to hidden just so we don't have those horizontal scroll bars. And that right there is essentially all we need to do to set up our wrapper. Now we need to set up our parallax effect. And to do that, we need to do three dimensional work in CSS. And in order to have a 3D effect, you need to specify a perspective. In our case, we're going to use 10 pixels. Now, the way a perspective works is essentially it's saying, hey, how big is our Z axis in our, you know, measurements? We have an X and Y axis, so X is horizontal, Y is vertical. The Z axis is like how far away is something from you? Like if you're at the screen, if I'm sitting here at my computer, this perspective says I'm 10 pixels away from my screen. So something that has a, you know, Z position of 10 pixels would be like really close to me because it's way pushed out from the screen. And something that has like negative 10 pixels would be really far away from me because it's deep inside the screen. We're going to play around with that a little bit. But this perspective value, it actually doesn't matter what it is. You can make it 10 pixels, you can make it one pixel, 100 pixels, it doesn't matter. It just matters that all the other values you use are relative to this perspective value. So now let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're gonna move on to the header here. And this header, I just wanna make it so all of our elements are stacked on top of each other. So we're gonna give this a position of relative. We're gonna make it a display of flex. We're gonna justify our content in the center and align our items in the center as well. This is just going to allow us to center our text. And I also wanna specify that this should be a 100% height. Essentially, it should take up the full height of our screen. And in order to make sure we do everything in three dimensions, our transform style here should be preserve 3D. That allows our three dimensional animations to work properly. Then we're gonna set our Z index to negative one. And I'll show you why in just a little bit, but this is really important to make sure that all of our elements show up behind this section down here. Cause if we don't set the Z index to negative one, they're actually gonna show up over top of our content, which looks really bad. So now to position everything in the right place, let's select our background. And we wanna select our foreground. And all I wanna do for these is I wanna position them absolutely. And I wanna put the height to 100%, the width to 100%, and then what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the object fit is set to cover. That's just gonna make it so that our image actually looks good. And it's gonna have the right aspect ratio because without this, the image is gonna be all scrunched like this. It doesn't look as good. While with cover, it's going to give us the correct aspect ratio no matter how wide or small our screen is. So right now, as you can see, our header section just takes up this top portion right here and that's it. And as we scroll down, it's only in that top portion. We don't have any cool animation effects yet. You'll also notice that our text is hidden. We could get around that, make our text visible by setting the Z index to negative one for our background and foreground. And now you can see our text shows up over top of that and it looks really good. Now to create the parallax effect, this is all the code you really need right here. We're gonna take our background element and we're gonna take our foreground element and we're gonna apply some transforms to them. So we're gonna take a transform here and we wanna translate in the Z direction. That's going to be making something either closer to us or further away from us on the screen. By passing a negative value, we're making it further away. So we're gonna say that our background is negative 10 pixels away. And if you remember at the beginning, I kind of mentioned how this perspective value doesn't matter. I could set it to one, 100, 10, it doesn't matter. And that's because everything is relative to it. This negative 10 is just exactly the same as my perspective here, which is 10. So now when I save, you can see that this background image looks a lot smaller. And that's because it is very far away from us in relation to our perspective. Our perspective is 10 pixels and we're saying this is negative 10 pixels away. So what that's saying is our background is twice as far away from us as the actual screen of our computer is. So to make our background appear the same size as it was before, we just need to specify a scale of two. And that's because this image is twice as far away as normal. By putting that scale back to two, now our image is exactly the same size as it was before without that Z index. But the important thing to note, it is now further away from us. So it's going to scroll at a different speed. If I scroll down on my page, you notice the mountain right here does not scroll at the same pace as the rest of my page. And that's because it's further away from me and things that are further away appear to move less as you move when you're where you are. So the stuff that's closer to me appears to move more quickly than the stuff further away. Now I can do the same thing with our foreground, which we have right here. I can take my transform, but instead of making it 10 pixels away, I'm gonna make it five pixels away. So now, as you can see, it's five pixels away. And if we get rid of our scale, it shrunk down quite a bit. So we need to add our scale back in. In our case, our scale is gonna be 1.5. We need to increase the size by 50% because it's essentially 50% of our perspective away from us. When I save, you'll notice now, when I save and unsave this, my trees are the exact same size on my screen. So I haven't actually messed with their sizing. I've just made them appear further away by making them further with the translate Z. Now, when I scroll, you'll notice that the trees and mountains move at a different speed and my text moves at a different speed. So everything is moving at a different speed. Now I mentioned that we need that negative one on our 
Z index for our header. The reason for that is if I scroll down, you'll notice all the content for our images is showing up over the top of our text. With this Z index here, it means that the content for our images shows up behind, which makes it look a lot better. Now, really the important thing to recap here is that we created this wrapper and this wrapper gave us essentially a scrolling context. And this scrolling context is where we set our perspective on. We made sure that we set our header inside of here to be the same size as our wrapper. And we have our transform style to be preserved 3D. So we have our scrolling context, that's important. Then we have our transform style here to preserve 3D. And then we're just translating in the Z direction further away from us the things that we want to be further away and then scaling them back up to their original size so that we can make sure that they look like we want them to. And that right there gives you this awesome parallax scrolling effect. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love my full CSS course. I'm gonna have it linked down in the description below. It teaches you everything you need to know about CSS from the very beginnings to even more advanced concepts. So I highly recommend you check that out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.